time on Digging with KG and Ringy. Oh, what is this? You got a spell? Holy cow, look at that thing. Sometimes gold is not made of gold. I got the patch. Ping, ping, ping. Sometimes gold is made out of iron. <laughs> baby. KG and I are starting our second week down under, gradually working our way deeper inland toward the gold fields of Australia, where we hope to extract some big solid gold nuggets. Our first stop in the bush is Hill End. There's an old ghost town there and tons of mining history. In 1872, a crew working near Hawkins Hill at Hill End dug up a massive record set in gold specimen that became known as the Byers and Holterman Nugget. It contained about 3,000 ounces of pure gold. In today's market, that nugget would be worth over three and a half million dollars. This is an old area, it's got a museum in it now, but back in the day, there were tons of miners, mining camps, and even an old 1800s racetrack. Tons of people came to watch the races, so there could be super old coins, even gold nuggets that were passed around by the miners betting on the horses. KG and I want to locate that track and see what kind of history we can dig up. Ah, there we go. That sounds really good. It's kind of deep, so it's probably pretty old. Ah, oh, I see something round in the hole. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha! Check this baby out. Old time. Musket ball. Oh, hey, right here. Oh, there it is. Big old round ball. This is the first Australian round ball I have that's perfect. I got a smashed one I just found up on the ridge. Australian guns blasting away at probably kangaroos, you know? Kangaroos are the deer of Australia. I just made that up, and they make good eating. I'm going to have a kangaroo burger tonight myself to celebrate the finding of this awesome Australian round ball. <laughs> Look at the size of this massive bullock. Why is it here in kangaroo country? I don't know. All I can think of is maybe the stagecoach was riding through here carrying a bunch of gold going to bring it to town, maybe some bandits were coming after him, riding kangaroos, shooting away, flew down through here and the bolts were landing all around here. Oh, hey, listen to this. Definitely some kind of iron. Oh, you can see it sticking out right here. Look at this. At first I thought it was like part of a stirrup, but definitely not. Don't move, stay right where you are. Look at this, this, this is an old trap. I mean, sitting right on the surface. If KG was here, he'd be saying you gotta use your eyeballs. Perhaps a duck-billed platypus met its fate right here. Duck-billed platypi, perhaps. The little trap set an arm, slide it in, and then they put a hunk of cheese here or a marsupial egg, and then something will come and try to eat it, and then this slips out, there you go. This is pretty awesome. I like it. We're finding a ton of spent ammo from guns like these. It's obvious that there was a lot of hunting and trapping in this area, but none of that stuff is any indication that a horse racing track was ever here. No shooting mic. We were starting to wonder if this was a wild goose chase, and then KG comes up with a pretty decent signal. Hey, that's a pretty good sound. It's kind of a little bit of a mid-tone. Ooh, it's right there. Oh, look at this. Looks like some kind of a little pendant or something. I'm thinking it was gold plated because you can see a little tint of gold on the shaft. It looks like there's an eagle or some kind of a bird on it. I mean, it looks like maybe one of them ladies back in the 1800s went to the horse track. Maybe she had this really cool 
fancy gold gilted hat pin in her hat and the wind blew her hat off as she was standing there and the pin fell off and waited for me to come along and dig it up. That sounds pretty good. It's a perfect mid-tone. I'm working out this washed out area. It's all eroded. A lot of times when you get into areas like this, the water over years, it'll erode the ground and it'll expose the nectar. It's a good place to hunt. Ah, check that out. That's pretty cool. That sounds pretty good. It's a perfect mid-tone. Ah, check that out. That's pretty cool. Looks like some ancient bead. I'm thinking it's got a hole through it. It's really intricate. Looks like it's made out of brass. Ha! That's a cool find. Oh, that's pretty cool. Check this out. Looks like an old necklace or something, but there's a horse head right on it. <laughs> Looks like it perhaps maybe was gold gilted a long time ago, but over a hundred years the gilting wore off, leaving just a portion of the gold. KG got a little tiny gold on an artifact in Australia. That's cool. KG's last few finds are exactly the kind of things you might find in an old racetrack, especially the horse head pendant or buckle thingy. I was kind of feeling left out until I walked around a huge tree that might have been where race fans gathered to watch the action from the shade. KG and I were down in this big flat area and there's a hill that rises up and right at the base of it is this massive, massive tree. I don't even know what kind of tree it is, probably eucalyptus because I think that's all they have here in Australia. I don't know, I'm not an expert on plant foliage. There we go. It's kind of a kind of a weird mid-tone sound, you know? Could be like a, you know, if it's not a gold nugget, it could be a, an old button or something, because we're right where the old racetrack used to go around. This would have been the grandstands, and I'm thinking this massive, massive tree. Back then, that would have been a great place to get some shade and enjoy the festivities. Sit back, relax. Oh! It's round and it is big. Big roundness in Australia. Here we go. Check the edge of this out. Look, right here. Oh, it's a huge coin. Look at this thing. It's got a, oh, it's a big 20. <laughs> 1981 20 cent piece. I'm telling you, we're in an old, old 1800s place. I finally stumble onto a coin after hours of searching, only to be devastated with the 1981 date. We had some serious fun at Hill End. There was great hospitality, and we unearthed some really cool finds, but it's time for us to move on. Next up, Warren takes us deep into the whipstick forest as well as some private surrounding areas to hunt where miners from the 1850s to the present day have found massive amounts of gold. So Warren, what are we doing out here? Where are we? Ringy, where we are today is the Golden Triangle in Victoria and Australia. It's named the Golden Triangle because of the amount of gold that came out of this area exceeded any other area in the world at the time. This was the richest piece of ground in the world in the 1860s and it lasted right up to the early 1900s. There was more gold came out of here than California. Over 480 tonnes came out of this area. Don't forget, they could only take the gold they could see. Now we can see into the ground with metal detectors, so we can find those little pieces that they threw away, or maybe the big pieces they threw away too. It's in here somewhere. I want some of that yeah. Australian gold. Yeah. Yes, okay. definitely. That's our goal. We want to find a nugget of gold from Australia. Well, okay, well let's go and do it then, eh? All, All right. right. Track it. hit right here. This could be something awesome. <laughs> Look at this thing. Perfect hit right here. <laughs> Look at this 
thing. Cool old time shaver. This thing looks pretty old. I'm thinking early 1900s. You know, you got people out here searching for gold for weeks. They probably stink like an old horse. You know, they probably got giant beards with dirt encrusted in it from mining. But I'm thinking maybe there was a miner out here. Maybe he found a little pocket of nuggets and he was gonna head to town and cash them in. So he wanted to shave up and look real good because now he's packing a little gold. Who knows? Maybe he can go in, have a drink, and pick himself up a Sheila. Kind of a weird bouncy sound, but could be a nug. Ooh, there it is. Oh, look at that. Roundness. It's a button off of a shirt. This is probably something one of the miners wore. There could have been a whole caravan of people up here, you know, looking for gold everywhere, all around in the, in the forest here. And then all of a sudden, one guy stands up screaming, I just found a 10 pound nugget. You can all kiss my grits. And then he takes off running, trips over a stump, falls down, tears his shirt, off pops the button, and the nugget goes rolling right to the feet of a bigger dude, the biggest dude in the canyon. He picks up the nugget and says, you lost it, it's my nugget now. And then he walked into town, sold the nugget, and bought a big old beer. And then the miner was very sad because he'd made the mistake of trying to show off. Lost his button and his nug. That's a lesson for all you youngsters out there. Hold on to your nugs and hold on to your buttons. Once those first couple of finds popped out, it was on. The floodgates were open. <laughs> Look at this old gun. Man, that is awesome. Heavy duty, old time toy gun. Oh, it says Aussie right on it. Some old Australian toy gun. Check that out. <laughs> oh, that's round. That's definitely roundness, and that's no little dime from the US of A. We're in Australia, where everything is bigger, and I got a big coin in the clump. Oh, yeah, it's got a kangaroo right on it. Oh, there's the date right there next to the roo. 1948. I love it. Australia is really cool. They had cool stuff, like giant pennies and kangaroos. I love Australia. <laughs> I see silver. Yeah! I think I got a big giant fat silver ring. I thought I had a silver coin, but no. Ha! 925 right on it. Silver for sure, baby. Yeah! Ringy is not the ringmaster in Australia. KG is the ringmaster. Giant silver ring for the king in the land down under. Ooh, it's a perfect fit. There's something pretty good here, I think. That is really cool. Huge brass buckle. You know what, they had things called puddlers, I think, you know? When they talk down here, they say, ah, oh, that's a puddler. It's a puddler, mate. And they took these horses, they took one horse, dig a big hole around a tree or a post or something, and then they'd hook up something to it so that when the horse walked around and around the tree, it would like stir up the mud in the puddle. <laughs> And all that clay and stuff where the gold was, it was sticking to the clay, it would all break apart and then they could separate that gold. Who knows, there could have been a big post or a tree around here, they hooked it up and this was the saddle or something that hooked it together and then the horse went around and around, the gold got separated from the clay and then people took it to the bank. It's all part of history, folks. Simple. History in the pock for Ringy. Oh, that's a great hit right there. Oh, oh KG. Oh, Someone should call the fire department because KG and I are burning it up down under. Yeah! We're looking for gold and we're looking for history. And we're still on fire. Oh, that's a great hit right there. Oh, oh, KG. Oh, 
KG, get over here. Oh, I see it. Big roundness in the massive, hole. Massive, massive right coin. Right there. You could even read the word Australia <laughs> from right there. Kangaroo. Oh, there's a kangaroo on it. Big coin. Nice. 1947. I love it. This is so cool. Let's have a little side bet. The winner can choose the loser's fate. I'm willing to take that bet. Huh? <laughs> All right. All right, let's it's do it. It's on. Look at that. Two coins stuck together. This is a good sign. I mean, for finding old coins, I'm thinking there could be a nugget at any time. Hey. That's how coins are reproduced in the wild. You find two coins in the hole, you keep searching, you're bound to find a little silver dime or something from the coins, you know, having babies. Woo, yeah! Check it out. Old time horseshoe. There could be gold stuck to the bottom of this. He could have walked right through gold. I don't know. I don't smell gold. It smells like button out. Back in the United States, you know, in Civil War sites and whatnot, we find old buttons like this with the old loop back on them. A lot of times they're Waterbury buttons. Let's see, this could be a military button or something. It looks like maybe a couple of ducks on it. it looks like they're walking on a train track or something. This is bizarre. I mean, this could be the ultimate find right here. I've never seen anything like that. I'm thinking I could have one of the rarest buttons in the world. is this? We're in the Whipstick Forest where all that gold mining took place in the 1800s. Yeah, they had a gold rush in Australia just like in the United States and it all took place about the same time. You know, we had our 1849 gold rush, 1850s here, they're digging up tons of gold. Even though we've turned up some incredible finds here in Australia, we still haven't found any gold nuggets. Knowing it could take months or even years before landing a huge piece of gold, we decide to meet up with one of Warren's buddies, a gold hunting expert, to better our odds. Grecky is a cool dude. He's forgotten more about gold hunting than we will ever know. A couple of quick lessons. To have the ground as flat as possible so the coil goes on top of flat ground. And we're off. I got a really teeny tiny faint hit. Reggie. I got a little itty bitty hit here, right in the middle there. And just scrape it back a little bit. Oh, uh, it's right in there. Right there. Oh! oh! <laughs> Australian gold, baby! <laughs> Man, that's a tiny little nugget. It's like wrapped around quartz. That's the KG it, nugget. <laughs> this is the KG. Hey, when you find a gold nugget, you can name it anything you want. It's your nugget. You can do whatever you want. This is the KG nugget right here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. Scrape a little away at a time. Keep your ground as flat as you can possibly keep it. Ah, oh, it's really loud now. <laughs> I see gold, baby! Holy mackerel, look at that! <laughs> Massive hunk of gold! Oh, it's heavy. We gotta clean it off. Mm. That's so yummy. I come to Australia searching for artifacts and gold, and I have succeeded. I now have a giant chunk of Australian gold, baby. Woo! <laughs> KG has a little chunk of gold in the pocket, and I can't leave Australia without some G of my own. So after spotting some high banking equipment in one of Grecky's sheds, I persuade him to let us take a crack at running some material. Hunting for gold is very different than relics. So in order to get some gold right away, I was thinking we need to sluice a little bit. You pour the dirt and water into one end and all the rocks get washed by the water and then they fall down the contraption. The big rocks go out on the side on this one and the little rocks go down into the center into this tray. And the tray has like a little mat in there with riffles and stuff to catch all the gold. And the cleanup is the best part of all because that's where you get to see what's in the bottom of the tray. 
gonna tap this a little. Look at that gold climb right up the edge. Oh, look at that. Look at that. A couple nice little pieces of gold right there. You know what, Ringy? I'm extremely happy. We now have Australian gold. That's a win. It sure is. We came here to find gold in Australia. We achieved our goal. Gold in the pock for KG and Ringy. KG, we've been in Australia for two weeks and we have torn it up. This has been an incredible adventure for us. Yeah. And I mean, you made it even better. So thank you. We had you. a great time together, didn't we? It was just fantastic. It was a yeah, blast. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Well, thanks for coming over. Maybe, no, we were not gonna let you back into this country. <laughs> you know, when KG and I go out on a hunt like this, we usually have a little competition and we want somebody to pick a winner and we've chosen you. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> so Warren, I mean, out of all these awesome artifacts, I mean, what's your favorite one? Okay, this is a tough call. You, you blokes have found some fantastic stuff over the last two weeks, but my favorite find is that livery button. That's an awesome Yeah! Woo! Yeah! I'm telling you though, fire pit out here, glass all over the place. Woo! <laughs> How we do on the land down under? Hey, good work in Australia, huh? At least I don't have to worry about it anymore. Come on, I'll go buy you a new beer. All right. Join us again next time for more history and amazing adventures on Digging with KG and Ringing.